the senator from Alaska. Mr. President, is the Senate in a quorum call? It is not. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm going to pose a simple question here related to this guy. That's the dictator of China, Xi Jinping. Imagine if a Chinese financial institution, one of their banks, one of their private equity funds, they got a lot of them. Imagine if a Chinese financial institution started to invest in the United States in big technologies that would make the U.S. military much stronger. What do you think would happen to those executives? In China, they're taking Chinese money and they're pouring it in to companies that work directly with the Pentagon, making the U.S. Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force stronger and more lethal. What would this dictator do to those Chinese executives? I'll tell you what he'd do. A, he'd never let them do it, but if they did do it, he'd arrest them, put them in jail, and shoot them at sunup. That's what he would do, okay? There's not one person in this body, not one person in America, heck, not one person in China that would disagree with that. That's what he would do. So, Mr. President, what happens when American investment companies, financial institutions, private equity firms, hedge funds, venture capital firms, investment banks, what happens when they invest in Chinese companies that make the Chinese military more lethal and stronger? What happens? Answer, Mr. President, pretty much nothing. Worse, we have a hard time knowing which American firms are even doing this. Mr. President, this is a huge knowledge gap and an asymmetrical advantage that our biggest adversary right here, Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party, have over us. They can't invest, they won't invest. You'll get the death penalty if you invest in an American company that will help our military become stronger. We have, who knows, a lot of financial institutions investing in Chinese companies to make their military stronger. We have companies and financial companies are investing in Chinese Communist Party companies that are producing things like advanced semiconductors, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, hypersonics, all technologies that are critical to dominating the 21st century battlefield. This is a giant American national security issue. Now, Mr. President, I don't, I don't normally come down on the Senate floor and quote Lenin not a big fan of Lenin's, but he purportedly said that, quote, capitalists will sell us the rope with which we will hang them. This is a little bit of that going on right now here in the United States of America. We have executives in this country and certain financial institutions. By the way, these American financial institutions and executives owe everything to their success by being American, being in the greatest country in the world, with the rule of law and our capital markets and our dynamic economy, their success is because of the great nation we live in. And yet, some, kind of addicted to making more money, listen to Lenin, are like, you know, maybe I, maybe I will do that advanced chip manufacturing investment in the Chinese economy. Maybe I'll help them a little bit with artificial intelligence or quantum computing. By the way, Quantum computing, you get really good at that, you can break any code that our military uses, right? You're toast if you can't communicate in a covered fashion, encrypted. So this is really dangerous stuff. I was first actually made aware of this many years ago by one of the men, one of the in my view, one of the best chairmen of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for our military we've had in decades, Marine Corps General Joe Dunford. 
just a fantastic Marine officer, just a fantastic chairman, very measured, very smart, very strategic. He raised this issue with me many years ago. Senator, we, America, have financial institutions, American financial institutions, using American investment money, you know, the Iowa teachers' retirement plan, the laborers' retirement plan. They're taking that money, they're investing it in China in some really advanced technologies. There's a problem. Chinese don't have that kind of investment capital and professionalism to grow these companies, but we do. So this was first brought up to me by a great Marine general. So I started digging into it, Mr. Chairman, over the years and years, and it is a giant problem. Senior administration officials in the Biden administration agree. A whole host of top national security officials in the Trump administration agree. This is a bipartisan issue in terms of the concern. It is a blinking red light for our national security. So some might ask, well, wait a minute. What's wrong with an American financial company making investment in the Chinese private economy? Well, look, it depends on what part of the Chinese private economy. You want to go, you know, make more hamburgers over there, or, you know, sell, I don't know, refrigerators, that's fine. But these are investments in some of the critical technological needs of the military that will enable whichever military dominates th these sectors to dominate the 21st century battlefield. And by the way, there's no such thing as a private company in China. If you're a private equity firm in America, you're saying, well, I'm just investing in this private company in China to help them with their quantum computing capability. We all know that the, this guy in the Chinese military, the PLA, and the Chinese Communist Party, they own that. They own that. They will take it, use it, dominate it. So, Mr. President, what can we do about this problem? Well, look, there's a lot of ideas on what we can do about this problem. I'm working on legislation that would actually have the U.S. government, believe it or not, and I'm not a big government guy, look into the investments being made by American financial institutions into some of the most high-tech areas of China, what we would call outbound CFIUS. CFIUS is this process for inbound investment. Let's look at what's happening outbound. That's a little more controversial. I think we need it, unfortunately, because we had a lot of, not a ton, but certainly a number of American financial executives who are like, look, man, whatever, patriotism, I'll leave that at the door. I'm not really worried about that. I just want to make a, I'm not worried about that guy. I just want to make a big buck. It's too bad, but we got him. So we need this. But Mr. President, here's an here's a easier starting point. Let's have a transparency provision that enables us, the U.S. government, to say, all right, big financial American firms or private equity firms or hedge funds, that American investment dollars that you're getting from the you know, Illinois Teachers Retirement Fund, we want to know if you're putting that into quantum computing that can help this guy dominate Taiwan. We want to know that. We want transparency. Pretty good idea. Now, Senator Cornyn, offered a bill, I was a co-sponsor of it, that we attached to the NDAA saying, we want outbound investment transparency. We want to know what are American financial firms doing helping this guy become stronger? Pretty easy. And guess what, Mr. President? Super bipartisan. That bill was brought to the floor as part of the National Defense Authorization Act and passed 91 to 6. 91 to 6. Very few things passed 91 to 6 here. That did, because it made sense. Very bipartisan and relatively simple. It's just transparency. Hey, is Sequoia Capital, and I'm going to talk about them in a minute, big private equity firm, are they investing in quantum computing that can help this guy dominate the world? We should know, especially if it's American investment dollars. 
right? So that's a good start. A lot of agreement. Um, here's a letter from Dr. Kevin Robert, Roberts, the head of the Heritage Foundation. And I'd like to submit it for the record. He was talking about how we need to be able to track U.S. capital flowing into China. And it would be extremely concerning if that Cornyn amendment didn't make it into the final NDAA. So he's saying, hey, senators, House members, make sure that stays in. Thank you, uh, President Roberts of Heritage. He also wrote the leadership of the House and Senate, Senator McConnell, Senator Schumer, Speaker Johnson, Congressman Jeffries, saying in, an, in another letter, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit for the record, saying this is really important, this Outbound Investment Transparency Act, 91 to 6, let's get it in the final NDAA. Pretty simple, pretty non-controversial. But Mr. President, as you know, nothing here is ever simple. Evidently, the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Patrick McHenry, I don't know him, seems like a nice guy from what I hear, but boy, is this guy misguided because it's all over the press that he fought like crazy to strip this provision out of the NDAA. Why would he do that? By the way, he's retiring, so I'm not sure why we give him a lot of say anymore. But somehow, some way, Mr. President, one congressman, Republican, by the way, over in the House, convinced the House to strip this transparency provision that's meant to undermine this bad guy. They stripped it out of the NDAA. So it's not in the National Defense Authorization Act because one congressman said, I don't want it in. 96, 91 senators said, we need it in. And by the way, the vast majority of the House wants it in. You have a really strong House member, Congressman Gallagher, who's leading this bipartisan China commission. He says it's really important. Biden administration wants it in. I've talked to Secretary of Commerce Raimondo, Secretary of Defense. They all want it in. But one congressman, who's not even going to be around anymore, gets to strip it out so we don't know what American investments are going to make this guy stronger. He gets the final say. Mr. President, this is an outrage. And this is not enough of an outrage as Senator Corn and I, two weeks ago, in a lunch, when the Speaker of the House came to visit us, we said, hey, Mr. Speaker, we're hearing some things about this really important, simple transparency invest, uh, investment provision that you guys might strip it out. Why? Come on. Some of us have been focused on the China threat for years. And now we got one congressman who's leaving. He says we strip it out when 91 senators said we need it. So the speaker said to me and Senator Cornyn, we were pretty forceful in the meeting. I, I, I'm a big fan of the new speaker, Speaker Johnson. But he said, well, it might not make it in the NDAA, but we will bring to the floor of the House a vote on the McCall bill. This is the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Chairman McCall, who's got an amendment that's very similar to the Cornyn Amendment. Actually, it's a little bit tougher. So he doesn't like it. Xi Jinping doesn't like it. So we're like, all right, Mr. Speaker, it sounds like a good compromise. Let's do it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. President, since that meeting, I think I got a commitment. I think Senator Cornyn thinks he's got a commitment from the Speaker of the House to a bunch of U.S. Senators saying, don't worry, we got this. Since that time, I've been reading press reports. Now, look, the press can get a lot of things wrong. The press is saying, no, actually, the Speaker's not going to bring up a vote on the McCall bill, which, by the way, in the House will get 340 votes, easy. And if that came back here, it would get 91, maybe more. So it would be super bipartisan. And this guy... This dictator would hate it. Let's do it. Let's do it. But Mr. President, um, just lately, the press is reporting that the speaker's now saying, eh, maybe I won't do what I told the senators. 
Maybe I'm going to put some kind of commission together and we'll study it. Well, as you know, when you start studying things here, that's the way to kick the can down the road. So my first priority here, Mr. President, is to call out the Speaker of the House and say, Mr. Speaker, I'm pretty sure you said you're going to bring the McCall bill to the House floor soon, maybe before Christmas, but certainly in January, and let's get it voted on. We'll pass it here in the Senate. I guarantee you the majority leader will bring it up. Let's do that. So I hope you continue to make that commitment, Mr. Speaker. It would be really disappointing if somehow a congressman who's leaving, leaving, teams up with the people who don't want us to know how Americans are investing in this guy's military industrial complex. That wouldn't be good. So I call on the speaker to keep that commitment that he made to a bunch of U.S. senators recently and not put forward some kind of baloney commission that's just kicking the can down the road. That wouldn't be good. But Mr. President, let me end with just the reason, like why does transparency matter? Why does it matter? Well, I want to give one small example, but it's a pretty good one. This is a firm, it's a venture capital firm called Sequoia. Now, very successful, Americans, they've benefited from being an American company, working in the American economy, really, really smart guys and women, highly successful, their executives are very wealthy, and that's great, this is a capitalist country, I love that. But, Mr. President, they were also known as one of these, one of these uh, firms that were doing what I said, making big investments, big, over many, many years in very high-tech components of the Chinese economy. Com advanced computer chip manufacturing, quantum computing, things like that. And I think that's wrong, that Americans and American executives and American investment dollars are going to China to help develop weapon systems that will be used to kill U.S. Marines and U.S. sailors if we ever get in a fight in the Taiwan Strait. So Sequoia Capital came to meet with me a couple years ago, and I essentially told them that. Hey, look, you're very successful. That's great. You live in the greatest country in the world. You've done a lot to help our economy, but why are you helping the Chinese economy? And why are you, why are you investing in things that are going to give them a military advantage over our soldiers sailors, airmen, and marines. Why are you doing that? They didn't have a good answer. It wasn't a very cordial meeting, to be honest, because we didn't see the same way. But um, at the very end of the meeting, actually, one of them got up and said, well, you know, Senator, if we don't do these kind of investments in China, the Saudis and Emiratis will. I was like, wait, what? That's your... That's your drop the mic argument at the end? You requested the meeting with me. That's a pathetic argument. What about patriotism? What about American interests? So, I started kind of blowing the whistle a little bit on this company. In hearings and stuff, we did a lot of research. They were doing a lot of big time investments in some of the highest tech elements of the Chinese economy that will help their military kill American sailors and Marines, soldiers, if we ever get in a fight. That's wrong. And so we started, some of us, putting a little pressure on these guys. Transparency. Calling them out. Americans doing this kind of thing. Well, Mr. President, some of that worked. They announced a big separation agreement they're not going to do it anymore. They're getting pressure from the Congress. By the way, legitimate pressure. And here's a headline from the Wall Street Journal. Sequoia made a fortune investing in the U.S. and China, China high tech technology that will help their military. And then it had to pick one. It had to pick one because members of Congress were saying, enough. That's transparency. 
So we want to know how many more sequoias are out there, Mr. President. It's a pretty legitimate ask. It's actually a very legitimate ask. It's so legitimate that 91 U.S. Senators voted for this. And we have one congressman over there who's leaving. Not sure where he's going. Maybe he's going to Sequoia Capital. And um, he's blocking it? So we need to fix this. We need to make sure the majority, the vast majority of U.S. Senators and U.S. House members who want transparency on this really important national security issue that this gets fixed. So once again, I'm calling on the speaker to keep his commitment, bring them a call bill to the floor soon, next week, two weeks, January. But don't let one congressman who's walking out the door thwart the vast, vast majority of the United States Senate and the United States House on a very important national security issue. You know, Mr. President, a lot of us talk a lot about China and the threats. I've been coming down here since I got elected, 2015, talking about the challenges of this dictator. He is a menace, dangerous, and they're growing their power. But you know what? A lot of it's talk. A lot of it's talk. This was something that was action. It wasn't a huge deal. Transparency. Action. And right now, we got Republican House members, hopefully not the Speaker, but certainly the Chairman of the Financial Committee, Banking Committee, who are saying, no, I want to keep it in the dark what Americans are doing to invest in making this guy stronger. That's wrong. 99.9% .9 of Americans would think that's wrong. So we need to fix it. The House needs to take some leadership on this issue. And my Republican colleagues who keep talking tough on China, it's time to act.